fellow beings, my name is Amanda and today we are going to be talking about cranial cervical instability. And since I am tired of doing all of the uh, action stuff, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Because while I know that studies have shown that Calling people to action will get them to do it. I also hate it when I watch it on YouTube for some reason. But yeah, I still subscribe to people. Yeah. Anyway. So, like, subscribe. Enjoy watching me do crazy stuff. And as you can see, I have my Halloween decorations up. And I wanted to show them off because why not? It's Halloween and that's what we do is we show off Halloween because Halloween is my holiday because I'm a witch. So there you go. All right, so cranial cervical instability. The reason I wanted to bring this up is because that is what I currently am diagnosed with because I feel like a bobblehead. So cranial cervical instability is where there is damage to the ligaments that are between your skull and your vertebrae that is your C1 and C2. So that causes excessive movement between your joints and that can cause nerve pain, that can cause nerve damage, that can cause all kinds of fun, exciting, horrible symptoms, such as damage to your vagus nerve, to your vertebral artery. Hopefully I said that right. And this can go along with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which I'm going to be making a video of later because I've been diagnosed with that as well. Um, it also, they are finding significant examples of people with myelagic encephalomyelitis having cranial cervical instability or CCI. And since I have both, I am a bobblehead, yay. So it can cause all kinds of really fun symptoms such as migraines, occipital headaches, so behind the eye headaches, which is always my left eye and it always feels like my eyeball is gonna explode out of my face. So it causes that. Neck, shoulder, jaw pain, that sounds fun. Difficulty swallowing or the feeling of being choked. That one happens to me often. And when I was younger, which makes me think that I've had this for a while, it would happen where it felt like there was something stuck in my throat and I had problems swallowing. So there's also tenderness in the base of the skull. I can't even touch back here. My pillows have to be super soft. I have problems touching it especially the left side of my head, can't even touch it. And it also causes a bobblehead kind of feeling where it feels like your head is just kind of not really connected to your vertebrae and it could just break off at any point. So you always feel like you're having a bobblehead moment. You can have things like photophobia, so very sensitive to light. You can have blurred vision, double vision. You can have tinnitus. You can have tremors. You can have orthostatic intolerance and dizziness, vertigo, palpitations, shortness of breath, nausea, fatigue, cognitive and memory decline, clumsiness or motor delay, fainting, or even weakness in the limbs. I have every single one of those except for fainting, but I have almost fainted numerous times. I have seen the darkness coming in. And all of these symptoms are made worse if you are sitting up for a long period of time. And if you lay down, you can have relief for a little bit if you lay down. So those are the some of the symptoms that can come from cranial cervical instability. It's a fun one, I will tell you that. This is what landed me in the ER a few months back because I had a major crash and I couldn't deal with the pain anymore and ended up in the hospital because my skull wanted to not be part of my body anymore. So one of the big things 
with cranial cervical instability and why it isn't the best thing other than a lot of the symptoms that come with it is that you are either having your brain stem crushing into your brain or your brain is coming out and pushing into your vertebrae. It sounds horrific because it is. And I'm gonna put up some pictures of some x-rays so that you can see where the bulges are happening and you have brain tissue, you have nerves, you have all kinds of things just pushing in on each other and it's not that great. To diagnose it, you have all of these symptoms so they can guess that you have cranial cervical instability, but then also you get an MRI. The best kind of MRI is a vertical MRI where you are sitting up while the MRI is happening. Most MRIs are done while you are laying down. And when you're laying down, everything kind of stretches out and looks pretty normal. So the best way to figure out if you have cranial cervical instability is to have you sit up and have the MRI done while sitting that way. Unfortunately, not very many clinics in the US have the ability to do that kind of MRI. Where I live, no one does it. So I have to go out of state to get that done. We are in the middle of a pandemic, flying for immunocompromised. Kind of scary. Will I do it if I need to? Yes, but right now we are battling with insurance to let me go out of state. But right now they're saying that I don't need it. Insurance. Just great. Now you can sort of tell with a normal MRI if things are pinching or pushing. Um, that is why I was told that I have it because there's a little bit of evidence that it's there, but it would show up way better if I was sitting up for the MRI. There's also CT scans that you can get where they make you move your head a lot and take lots of pictures that way. So that's another way to get diagnosed with CCI. Right now I am in the process of trying to get something done. And then once I get that MRI done, then I will go to a specialist and there is a specialist in New York and there is a specialist in Spain. We shall see which one I go to. Right now, Spain doesn't seem too great. I would love to go to Spain, I'm just saying. But Americans aren't welcome in very many places right now. So I may be going to New York before Spain, but the doctor in Spain seems to be more open to having people come than the one in New York. So we'll see, we'll see. So what can be done for CCI? So there is a conservative treatment where it's just traction, pain management, and rest. And that's what I'm doing right now. I actually have an at-home traction device that is actually a pillow that blows up. It looks ridiculous, but you know. And then pain management and rest. There's also a surgical option. They try and avoid the surgical option as much as possible because there's not a 100% healing rate with it, so you could go through the entire surgery and come out just as bad as you were before, but now you have a bunch of bolts in your neck. Though you could come out like Frankenstein, so you know. That would be the best Halloween costume right there. There's also occipital cervical fusion, which they fuse the vertebrae so that you can't move it anymore. And that way it makes it more stable so that you don't move those ligaments. It's not the best surgery, but some people have found a lot of relief through that surgery. And the other problem with that is that it reduces your range of motion in your neck, so you're pretty much stuck. So one of the theories also is that because the brainstem is being compressed so much, it can cause orthostatic intolerance, which will make you more dizzy. Your heart palpitations will happen more often. You'll black out a lot more easily. And so it can cause a lot of issues in your life. So it is 
important to get it treated. Now it could be the conservative method where you're getting traction and pain management and a lot of rest, or it could be through surgery. There are some other treatments that are under investigation at this point, but none of them have been approved quite yet because not a lot of people know about cranial cervical instability. That seems to be a common theme with my illnesses. So the big question is, are you at risk for cranial cervical instability? Probably not. It can happen with car accidents. If you get really bad whiplash, you can get cranial cervical instability because you damage those ligaments in your neck. Or if you have an autoimmune disease that causes inflammation in your joints. So that can be another risk factor. It's also very common with people that have ME. It's common with people that have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. It's common in people with Down syndrome. It's also common in people with rheumatoid arthritis. So it's not, it's not something that most people need to be worried about. So you don't, if you're having neck pain and you're worried that that's happening, just talk to your doctor. I am not a doctor. Don't rely on me for medical advice. Just know that I'm just trying to give as much information as possible so that you can feel not alone if this is what's happening to you. Me personally, I cannot wait for some kind of relief because pain management and traction is not exactly doing the best job right now. I would really love it if we fixed it. That would be great. But we're having issues with insurance and a pandemic. Yay 2020, this year is just just great, just great, just great, just great. All right, so I hope that you learned something. I hope that you took something away from this. I hope that you were able to understand that not every disability, not every illness is visible. And a lot of it, you have no idea. So someone could be in a lot of pain and you have no idea because they're really good at faking it. I know that when my neck is in pain, I can do a really good job at laughing at jokes and I just hold like as still as possible and just like, oh, that's great. It was a horrible laugh. That was not needed. So just remember that everybody is going through something. So remember that you are not alone. If you are going through something right now, and it doesn't matter what it is, remember that you are not alone. You're not the only one that's going through it. And you have resources to help you through whatever you're going through. And know that my empathy for you is very strong. So if nothing else, just know that I actually care. And I want you to have the best life possible. And I want you to find happiness, no matter what kind of life you're living because even if you have chronic illness and you have to reduce the amount of stuff that you do during the day, that's okay. Find what makes you happy and I hope that you find that joy. Remember to be kind. Kindness is free, so give it out to everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye. <music>
mind. <laughs> no, no, you don't? Okay. Why don't you go play? Nope, oh, gonna scratch some more. Scratch some more. I am playing with my foot. Thank you. Okay, yes, clean yourself. That's good. Continue doing that. <laughs> that that is my foot. Thank you. <laughs> the thing with this is that it causes something that I can't remember. I just came off of a four day migraine. So I am not feeling so hot. Even though this house is hot. <laughs> you can laugh at my jokes. Yeah, you, you can. You can laugh at my jokes. Um, occipital. Occipital. Now, the most effective version of MRI to get to find out if you have cranial cervical instability, living next to a really busy road right there, unfortunately, someone is in need of a fire truck. Fantastic. Dude, you haven't paid attention to that bed in months and I start recording and you decide that you need to tip it upside down. He's a toddler. I'm not paying attention to him. Can we put it back to where it was? Can I? Can I put this back? There. It's back to where it was. If you want to get in the hole, you can get in the hole. It's, it's a t-shirt box. It has a t-shirt wrapped around a box. He used to love it. Now he doesn't. Anyway. And then you turn into... Hi. <laughs> Such a toddler. <gasps> Pay attention to me. He'll ignore me all day. Pay attention to mom. Yeah? Hopefully they can see that. I don't know what's on the camera, sweetheart. I can't see it. But thank you. And thank you. Okay. That. He is now playing with my stage light over here. He's terrified of the stupid thing. But right now he's like, I'm going to play with the light of it. Find a toy and go play with it. Yeah. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Did it stop? Nope, it did not. Did that stop? Nope. Oh my god.